But now let's get into top managers because as we're talking about predictions and the season, you know, your team is has a lot of talent, but your team is only as talented as the guy in charge and making sure you've got a great manager to lead you. And there have been some phenomenal managers throughout the course of the Phillies club. And there have been some that have not been so phenomenal. And when you look over the history, there's a lot of names that we could have included here. But as always, we're looking at people who within their tenure with the Phillies made the biggest positive impact world series titles, Definitely being one of them. Any sort of playoff success, definitely being when another one. When you're the one. losingest franchise in the history <laughs> I wasn't gonna of say all it like sports that, and you Jamie. win a title here, guess who's going to be one and two? I wasn't going to say all that, but yes. The Phillies historically have sucked. Okay. I was These being more guys positive, won. Patty. They're at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Breaking, spo- spoiler, spoiler alert. Oh, wow. Yeah. There it is. The all guys right. that won... Get weighted heavy here. Okay. Because most of it has sucked. Okay, you ready for this one? Although it may be raining a lot, we need to be an arc, build an arc. Don't worry, because the Phillies had at the helm, Danny Oh, my God. (laughs) Number three (laughs) on the list before Tyler and Jamie kick me out of here, Danny Ozark. The Ozarks is a beautiful spot to visit, by the way. Have you been? Um, Nope, I've just seen the show. (laughs) (laughs) You can't back that up. It could be a dump down there. You have all those rednecks killing people. Like no Jason Bateman and Ozark was such a great show. It looked it was pretty a good. Okay? Show. I saw Jurassic Park. It looked beautiful. I just want to go back to the time of the dinosaurs and see what happens. Like, what are we doing? You're like Paige. He's like, I want to go there. I'm like, I, no, that, that dinosaur is going to eat us. It looked like a beautiful spot to visit. It's a great tourist potentially. Spot. Potentially. They also were doing some money laundering and but things there. But you said there. that, and I was like, oh, I guess she went to the Ozarks. I mean, I probably passed over it in flight, you mm-hmm. know, but I did visit it several times on Netflix. So okay. that's yeah. the extent of me and the Ozark. All okay, right. back to what I was trying to say. I thought it was a personal recommendation here. It is right personal. Right. I watched that show through and through. Ozarks was a beautiful, was a great show. I won't say beautiful. That's a weird way to describe it. Great show. And so we're leading things off. With the Ozark, Danny Ozark, that is. Let's go back to the graphic, shall we? <laughs> so Danny Ozark, seven years as the Phillies manager with a five, 594-510 uh, record during that time. He also had 100 win seasons in 76 and 77, did have three straight NLCS losses. Danny Ozark is one of the most successful managers in Phillies his- history, not to win a World Series with the team. He was the one that helped. He did all the heavy lifting. He helped climb to the top of the mountain and then fell short at the top of the mountain. And it did, of course, as we know, during his time, the team did turn a corner to be at least a playoff contender, be in the mix, be a team that progressively, um, you know, was able to take those strides from his first season where they finished sixth to then moving forward, being a team that was, you know, able to win the division or be third and second in the division, I should say, before winning the NL East in consecutive seasons from 76 to 78. Danny Ozark was the guy that literally put the team on his back and helped climb them up the mountaintop before the next guy took over and finished things off. Yeah, um, you know, before my time, didn't get to live and uh, die with his daily moves, obviously. Uh, (laughs) None of us here did, uh, but he's, you know, talked about pretty well here. Three straight NLCS losses is uh, pretty rough when uh, you come in third on the all-time manager list, having losing that many LCS games. Um, Yeah, Danny Ozark three. I mean, it's not a great list in totality. You know, when you look at Danny Ozark's three straight NLCS, uh, because I went back and I asked a couple of people who were, you know, growing up their formative years dur- during that run. And I, I said, hey, listen, 90, uh, 76, 77, 78, how many should the Phillies have won? And how many World Series would the Phillies have won? And the, the collective answer that I seemingly got was one for each mm-hmm. answer. 76, they ran into the Big Red, the big red Machine. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe one of the greatest baseball teams ever assembled. The, the five Hall of Famers on that team. Um, 78, they were 90 and 72. They were kind of on the downswing at that point. Uh, 77 was the consensus one that they seem to continually go back to is the one that they probably should have won the CS and could have won the World Series that year. I, I mean, it, you have to kind of look at it in time and place. And when you when you run into a Cincinnati Reds team that was elite and then you fall short to a Dodgers team, you, you, you may have been able to beat. Um, you know, it's it's mixed results. But when you get the three straight NLCSs, there's it's I mean, there's something, something yeah. to it. And I know it's different than it is now. It's, you know, yeah. that, you know, then it Less was, teams, then yeah. it was win your division, go to the yeah. CS, but 
still, I think it's... You got to get over the hump yeah. to be a top two guy. You do. You do. And our number two guy did get over the hump. He took the torch that was passed on from Danny Ozark and ran with it. Although his tenure was not long, it was successful, to say the least. Dallas Green, in his three years as the Phillies manager, he took over midseason in 1979 and then turned around and won the World Series in 1980. Um, they were 34-21 and 21 with the first half. What is this? Oh, in the first half of 81 during the strike. And then he replaced, as mentioned, Danny Ozark in 79 to have the first postseason berth, the first the win the pennant, win the World Series in 1980. Um, again, that brief stint for Dallas Green to be the only man to lead the team to a World Series for over 100 years is remarkable and absolutely launches you at the number two spot. No, it's not Gabe. It's Dallas <laughs> because he helped lead this club to their World Series. They, uh, you know, it's remarkable to see how much Danny Ozark kind of laid the foundation, and then Dallas Green really came in and was able to help the club solidify themselves and win a World Series. Yeah, I mean, Pete Rose had a lot to do with that, uh, but Dallas yes. Green is, you know, one of those baseball lifer, just great managers everywhere. He, he went was successful. Uh, wasn't here as long as our number one guy, but, you know, a monumental... Uh, Phillies manager in their history. Yeah, and I mean, there were rumors for, uh, you know, that kind of swirled around in that seven, right after 79 during the 80 season that, like, if this wasn't it, you know, you start to look internally and maybe start to think about breaking the core up. So 80 was m monumental, not just for winning the first World Series mm -hmm. in the franchise's history, but keeping that core together for another, you know, it, it only ended up being another two or three years to get back to the World Series in 83. And then it kind of starts to deteriorate from there. But I think that if they don't, at least get to the World Series in 80, let alone win the World Series in 80, you may see an entirely different core enter the 81 season, and then maybe they don't get to the 83 World Series. Exactly, exactly. So Dallas Green did get them to a World Series, and our number one guy did as well. I know Chris Lemmer, you, are, you had your top three in the chat. Um, you are correct. Our number one, by no surprise whatsoever, who helped win a World Series in 2008. It's Charlie Manuel, Uncle Charlie. Nine years as the Phillies manager, a 786-36 record with a 551 win percentage. He, of course, in 2008, led the team to the World Series. 2009, the pennant, five times they won the NL East. And the average NL East finish for the team when Charlie Manuel was leading, 1.7. Charlie Manuel, just a phenomenal person. A phenomenal, you know, still one of those guys that, as we even saw down in spring training, people get up on their feet for and cheer for and are excited for because, you know, as he says, this is for Philadelphia. This is for our fans. It's he connected, you, connected so well with the fans, connected so well, and arguably, uh, the without a doubt, I should say, unanimously, the greatest manager to have led this group with those uh, NL East. NL runs and a World Series. Yeah, just a, a, a great dude. Um, you know, his <laughs> team loved him. Like Jimmy Rollins used to say, sitting up on the railing with Charlie talking baseball was yeah. his favorite memories. Um, he's just, he's the best. He's Uncle Charlie, man. I mean, he won a title uh, with that team. He was here for a long ass time. He still is. Um, Charlie's the best. Yeah, he is. Any, right. any thoughts on oh, I, 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 There's not much for me. I thought me you were looking when he did no, the cue. I, th I think there's not much for, more for <laughs> me to add. I think that, I mean, you know, you obviously, he, he had a little bit of luck. And I think there's a little bit of luck with any manager because you have a team that was willing to spend money, had an incredible core that was that, that grew together and, and thrived together. But it doesn't mean that you're, you know, it, there's no takeaway from a manager. Like, he pulled all the right strings for a, a handful of years. And, yeah. you know, re whether the right strings are easier decisions or not, like in 2008, you send Brad Lidge out there. All right, safe situation. There goes Lidge. Just because you knew that it was going to be a lockdown situation. Jimmy Rollins at the top of your order is a catalyst. Chase Utley and Ryan Howard hitting 3-4 is, you know, one of the most potent 3-4s in baseball for a five-year stretch. But I, I think at the same time, you only can get – like, like a man, a good manager can help you win, you know, four five, six extra games. And I think more mm -hmm. times than not, Charlie did that. And, you know, the two paired really well for the most successful run over the course, probably in the course of Philly's history. It's, it's either, yeah. it's either 76 through 80 or seven through 11. Those are your two choices. And I think because of the fact that they got to two world series, they won five straight divisions. Would probably lean the 07-11 run over 76 through 80.